You're watching Study with Sudhir. This is your digital classroom. My name is T.S. Sudhir. We are going to be looking at a chapter from Snapshots, which is the supplementary reader for CBSE class 11 students. And the chapter we are looking at is chapter number 4, Albert Einstein at School, written by Patrick Pingle. It's an interesting story about his schooling days uh, and the kind of problems that he faces in that very regimented kind of structure. In fact, there was a story related to Einstein even in class 9 that you must have read. So in that sense, you'll be able to find enough connections between that story and what you're going to read in this one. Now, we will know about the problems that Einstein faced as far as subjects like history were concerned, but at the same time, the ease with which he handled a subject like mathematics. It also gives you a glimpse into the kind of person young Einstein was and how that kind of shaped his mind even as an adult. So the story starts with, in what year Einstein asked the history teacher, did the Prussians defeat the French at Waterloo? I don't know, sir. So he obviously is no way interested or aware of the fact that the Waterloo took place in June 1815 and he does not think it's necessary to kind of crowd his mind with remembering dates of that sort, perhaps rightly so. What don't you know? You have been told it often enough. So the history teacher expects in the way history is taught that once it has been taught to the students, they ought to remember the date. It has been taught to you many times, he says. I must have forgotten. So he's being brutally honest. Did you ever try to learn? Asked Mr. Braun, the teacher, the history teacher. No, sir. Albert replied with his usual unthinking honesty. It's a very interesting phrase and I would strongly suggest, advise that you use these kind of phrases in your answers when you're talking about Einstein's character. Usual unthinking honesty, right? When you quote from the text, that makes your answers look that much better. Why not? I can't see any point in learning dates. One can always look them up in a book. So he believes in his book, you shouldn't kind of memorize or rote learn many of the things. You should only understand. And that is what Einstein believes education should be all about, learning should be all about. And Mr. Braun is obviously not used to hearing these kind of answers. And he was completely speechless. He says, don't you realize, you amaze me, Einstein, don't you realize that one can always look up most things up in books? That applies to all the facts that you learn in school. Einstein says, yes, sir. Further shocking Mr. Braun. Then I suppose you don't see any point in learning facts. Frankly, sir, I don't, said Albert. Then you don't believe in education at all. Oh, yes, sir, I do. So he's making a distinction between the kind of education that was imported at that school and the kind of education that should ideally be there. He's making that distinction. I don't think learning facts is education. In that case, said the history teacher, who is obviously feeling extremely insulted as a result of this kind of uh, 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 repartee by young Albert Einstein. He says, with heavy sarcasm, perhaps you will be kind and as to tell the class the Einstein theory of education. So he's being obviously extremely sarcastic. Albert flushed, you know, he understands that sarcasm hits Albert Einstein. I think it's not facts that matter, but ideas, he said. I don't see the point of learning the dates of battles or even which of the armies killed more men. I would be more interested in learning why those soldiers were trying to kill each other. Right? So he's making actually a very pertinent point. He's not interested that 90 soldiers were killed on this side, 110 on the other side, but he's more, or the date on which they killed each other, but he's more interested in knowing why did they actually go to the battlefield. That's enough. Mr. Braun's eyes were cold and cruel. He's obviously, so he, you get an idea about the kind of school it is and the fact that Albert Einstein is very matter of fact and very honest with his opinions. He does not get intimidated by the presence of this history teacher who obviously brooks no nonsense. That's enough. We don't want a lecture from you, Einstein. So there is a sense of looking down upon. The teacher believes this child obviously does not know enough, definitely not enough to be able to be schooling the teacher instead. You will stay in for an extra period today, though, although I don't imagine it will do you much good. It won't do the school any good either. You are a disgrace. I don't know why you continue to come. So 
please remember this paragraph mark out this paragraph this is important because you should quote from this paragraph he is called a disgrace by mr brown he is asked as to why does he continue to come to the school if he really believes this kind of education is of absolutely no use to the young einstein it's not my wish sir albert pointed out so you realize that albert as i said does not get scared he doesn't get intimidated he kind of answers back to the teacher in a very polite tone he says then you are an ungrateful boy and ought to be ashamed of yourself i suggest you ask your father to take you away albert felt miserable when he left school that afternoon not because it had been a bad day most days were bad now so it was for him a very usual day in any case he didn't enjoy his time at school it's pretty obvious but because he had to go back to that hateful place again the next morning he only wished that his father will take him away and put him in some other school where a different kind of education where the focus will be on ideas right on concept instead of rote learning right uh, but he realized that he would have to stay there till he got his diploma and going back to his lodgings where the place where he stayed did not cheer him up either because the place that he had stayed was not a very very nice place and that also the the, the next course of uh, dialogue that he has with his friend yuri will give you a glimpse into the kind of person young einstein was uh, he did not mind the bad food or the lack of comfort even the dirt and the squalor but he hated that whole atmosphere of slum violence so you kind of realize that young einstein as he was when he was an adult is someone who abhors someone who resents violence of any kind in fact albert einstein later on uh, takes a position against germany uh, under adolf hitler also takes a position against the use of atomic bombs to be dropped on hiroshima and nagasaki by usa in fact he had written a letter to the american president saying asking for the peaceful use of atomic energy right since i mean basically he had a major role to play in that entire science of the atom his landlady beat her children regularly and every saturday her husband came drunk and beat her so you realize the kind of life of violence that young albert einstein was witness to while he was staying at that particular lodging but at least you have a room on your own so basically yuri is kind of trying to look at the glass half full saying that at least you have a roof over your head many people don't even have that right and here you are complaining about the slum violence at least you live among civilized human beings albert points out even if they are all poor students so he is obviously staying at a hostel is the impression we are getting they are not all civilized says yuri did not did you not hear that one of them was killed last week in a duel so he says just like there is a slum violence there is violence even there where i am staying they are also not civilized human beings so you realize in the midst of all this kind of violence albert einstein and his friend yuri actually stand out as two examples of decency and civility right uh, and what happens to the one who killed him nothing of course he is even proud of it so he says even the person who has actually been accused of the murder is actually wearing it is feeling very proud of it his only worry is that the authorities have told him not to engage in any kind of duels anymore because he says that so far he does not have any kind of scar on his face which he can wear as a badge of honor right so that's a very interesting kind of a glimpse into the germany of those days right ah uh, exclaimed albert and these are the students so he obviously not approving at all of this kind of behavior i uh, he told his cousin elza who actually he goes on to marry later on the same next time she came to munich normally she lives in berlin where her husband where her father had a business i'm sure you could learn enough to pass the exams albert if you tried i know a lot of boys who are much more stupid than you are who get through they say you don't have to know anything you don't have to understand what you are taught just be be able to repeat in the exam so he's she's basically telling him the mantra in order to be able to uh, pass the examinations without actually bothering much about it so he's actually carrying a book on geology even though it's not part of the curriculum not part of the syllabus that's because he says there is hardly any science and this is something which he feels genuinely interested in again it gives you a glimpse into the kind of personality that albert einstein was uh, he also played his violin something which the landlady 
did not approve of saying that it is not a sound which she particularly appreciated because it reminded her of wailing uh, and she says that all the time the kids are howling whereas Albert Einstein believes that it is because of her attitude that the kids are wailing all the time. Right. So now he wants to get out of this place. He wants to get out of this place and he thinks of the fact that if someone can actually give him a medical certificate saying that he has had a nervous breakdown and therefore he is not fit enough to continue in school, he would be able to get out of that school and perhaps move on to a slightly better place. And that is where Yuri comes in and says that, okay, I have a friend who would be able to give you a medical certificate and he introduces him to this particular uh, doctor who has actually become a doctor very recently he just passed out of medical school his name is dr ernst whale and he's asked whether he is a specialist in nervous troubles he says not exactly as a matter of fact he only qualified as a doctor last week you may even be his first patient so there is almost also a sense of humor that is introduced in this particular story right now albert met the doctor but he is uncomfortable with the fact that he is in a sense lying. He believes that he is actually not feeling too well about continuing in school. But he is not sure whether that is indeed good enough to be qualified and called a nervous breakdown. But he wants a certificate which says exactly that so that you can use that in order to get out of school. Get a leaving certificate from that school even if it is for a temporary period of about 6 months or so. After which, if he needs to, he can always come back. Of course, Albert Einstein says, I will never come back to this particular place. So, the doctor actually agrees to give him this particular certificate. I will certify that you had a nervous breakdown and must stay away from school for a while. Okay. So, he says, where will you go? He says, I will go to Italy, to Milan, where my parents are. Uh, and what will you do there? He says, I will get into an Italian college or an institute. So the problem comes that without a diploma, without having completed his course here, will he qualify to kind of join a different institute? And that's the dilemma that uh, Einstein now has. Uh, of course, he says that I'll ask my mathematics teacher to give me something about my work and perhaps that will be enough. I will learn, I have learned all the maths that they teach at school and a bit more. So he's obviously in love with the subject of mathematics, right? So he wants to get what is what is ideally, in fact, a very is a fake certificate. He's but he's very uncomfortable with that whole idea of lying. In fact, uh, his friend Yuri calls him that you know he's not a very uh, a good liar. He says you are the world's worst liar, which is actually to be taken as a compliment. So, he is honest, he is ethical and he is torn between the idea of right and wrong. So, you get a sense into Einstein's personality and all these instances and lines you should include in your answer if you are asked about the personality of young Albert Einstein. Right? Uh, it is also the story of a good friend because he invests in Yuri who is a good friend of his during his uh, school years. So, he gets a certificate right? and uh, uh, the doctor says, I don't need anything, but you could take Yuri out for supper. So, he takes him out for supper uh, and uh, that's what he says. So, six months has been given as a time when he could actually stay out of school. And then he goes to the maths teacher because he wants a recommendation letter. And Mr. Koch, who is the maths teacher, is more than happy to give him the reference letter because he says, I in fact gauged it much earlier that you will not stay in this school, right? Uh, you are only wasting your time. Uh, so, he says... Uh, it's only the truth and he gave him a very glowing reference. He says, I'm sorry you are leaving us, although you're wasting your time in my class. So in that sense, a very brutally honest teacher, maths teacher, Mr. Koch. He says, Mr. but Albert says, it's almost the only class where I'm not wasting my time in contrast to what he felt during the history class. Uh, but how did you know that I'm leaving? He says, you would not have asked me for this reference otherwise. So, and then he goes and then he realizes that the headmaster has summoned him because the headmaster wants to tell him that uh, I'm not going to punish you, your work is terrible and I'm not prepared to have you here any longer. So, perhaps the headmaster has been given a complaint from the history teacher, Mr. Braun, and he decides to send him out of school, an expulsion of sorts. So, he says, I want you to leave the school now. So, he says, am I to be expelled? He says, you can take it that way, Einstein. 
the simplest thing will be for you to go on your own accord and then the question won't arise. So if you say that you know you are leaving on your own accord, the word expulsion will not be used. But Albert now who till now obviously wanted to leave but he wants to know but he's not very comfortable and happy with the idea of being expelled. So he says what's a crime that I have committed and this paragraph is important. Mark this. Your presence in the classroom makes it impossible for the teacher to teach and for the other pupils to learn. You refuse to learn. You are in constant rebellion and no serious work can be done while you are there. So the, the idea that asking question is actually a state of rebellion shows you the kind of a regimented culture at this particular school where students are not encouraged to ask questions to the teacher. So that's the kind of an atmosphere and ecosystem which Albert Einstein obviously was very uncomfortable with. Albert felt the medical certificate almost burning a hole in his pocket. Now this is a slightly problematic phrase because burning a hole in the pocket is generally related to money. That you know you buy something very expensive and you say oh I burnt a hole in the pocket to buy this expensive car right. So here it's not about money. So uh, it's almost as if uh, he had thought that this was going to be his passport to freedom from that particular school and going to Milan in Italy. Uh, but instead of that, he was getting expelled. So it has been used in a slightly different sense by Patrick Pingle. I was going to leave instead. So now he's now feeling rebellious. Since in any case, he has been kind of accused of being in a state of constant rebellion. He decides to speak like a rebel. He says, I was going to leave anyway. Oh, then we are in agreement, at least Einstein, the headmaster said. And for a moment, Albert was attempted to tell the man what he thought of him and of his school. Then he stopped himself without another word. Holding his head high, he stalked out. Shut the door after you, shouted the head. Albert ignored him. Another instance of actually being rebellious, not taking orders, not following orders. He walked straight on out of the school where he had spent five miserable years without turning his head to give it a last look. Indeed, Yuri was almost the only person in New Munich, Munich town in Germany. He felt like seeing before he left the town. He had come to hate almost as much as the school. So he hated Munich because of the experience that he went through at that particular school. Elsa was back in Berlin and he had no other real friends. Goodbye and good luck, said Yuri when he left. You are going to a wonderful country, I think. I hope you will be happier there. So it's also the theme of happiness, very, very important. The theme of happiness during your student years, extremely important on what is considered as education and what is considered as a real education. The Albert Einstein theory of education, as it were, another important theme is in this particular thing. So happier there. So happiness seeking Albert Einstein is an important theme which you should be conscious of in this particular thing. And also the contrast between Mr. Koch, the math teacher and the headmaster and the history teacher. That's another thing which you should be aware of because all these facts can actually be part of your answers when you're attempting questions from this particular chapter. So that's as far as Albert Einstein at school is concerned. A very engaging chapter gives you a glimpse about the great man who at the age of 21 in the year 1905 had fantastic discoveries to his credit that almost changed the nature of science. Someone who after Isaac Newton was considered the greatest scientist to have been born in that uh, who actually worked in the 19th and mainly in the 20th century. Thank you very much. We'll continue to do all the stories, all the chapters from the English literature uh, for CBSC class 11 students. So do stay tuned to study with Sudhir. There's a lot more coming up. Thank you very much for watching.